were here with Robbie Andrews uh, in Boston and had the Adidas Boost Boston Games, and we were sort of chatting earlier about you know Lyme disease and sort of the issues that have you've been battling for the last couple of years. I'm wondering if you just explain on camera sort of what the situation was like and what, how that resulted in you know the poor performance last night. Yeah. Um, so uh, last year, kind of the week or two leading into USA, is pretty much right after Oslo. Um, mm -hmm. Things were like not going especially great. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, man, like these workouts are not correlating to what the fitness was at, and I was, I remember being like overly tired. And at the time, I was like, oh, it's jet lag, like you know, I traveled, like it was a hard race, whatever. Like I'll be fine for USA's, and um, I, you know, I wasn't. And then two weeks after, or as soon as I got back from there, I had a double ear infection, a rough upper respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. and I was like, this is bogus. Like, what's going on here? Um, and then I tried to race again in the summer, and I, was, I think I ran like 3:46 and like 1:52, and you know, obviously, not where I not where I was a month ago in right. Oslo. Um, so then I, I got you know the whole the whole gambit of blood tests, and you know, iron was fine, um, everything was kind of fine. Uh, so the only thing we could think of was you know just take a little bit of rest. Um, so I was resting, and then I I try and go for a run and. I like would be stuck in bed for like a couple of days, and I'm like, this is this is more than tired. Like something's off. And um, my sister had uh, had Lyme in 2016, and and Don Cabral, my roommate for a year, he had Lyme, and mm -hmm. and then I was kind of like, oh, like maybe I should get tested for Lyme. And the first test came back negative, of course. And then uh, I remember talking to someone. They're like, well, like the test is not very, it's not, uh, what's the word? Um, Definitive, accurate, accurate. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's not accurate, and it's also unreliable. Like, yeah. I think it was like a something like fifty-two percent accuracy rate. So, um, I went for a second one, and that one came back positive. And I was like, well, you know, I'm sorry. that's just kind of by um, you know averages. Like, one of them would have been positive, so we'll count it as a positive. Yeah. And um, that was great. It's like, oh, awesome. We have we have an answer. But this is now September. Uh, and you know I need to be training because yeah. um, I've essentially been jogging twice a week, three times a week, and stuck in bed. Mm -hmm. You know, if I if I'm in the sun for more than 20 minutes, like I'm exhausted. It was still it, no. This oh, is this is in the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was. Isn't I've never felt like that before in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so then I went uh, the homeopathic route for the for the Lyme in uh, in the fall, and I was I was doing a lot better. Like I had a lot more success. I was able to start training. Uh, I was able to have somewhat of an indoor season. Uh, I was running, I think I was running five days a week for probably three wow. months from October. I think it was the middle of October through January. I was running five days a week, you know, started at like 20 miles and got up to maybe 50. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, at least I'm consistent now. Like I'm running five days a week. That's, that's helped a lot. Uh, the two days off a week really helped. Uh, and then, you know, it's like, well, I gotta get in like good shape here. Like, let's, let's start getting in racing shape, and that's it was kind of too much. And I towards probably February I started not feeling great again, and I'm like, I need to, I need to, I need to take some antibiotics because that I kind of knew that was going to be the route at some point. But if I could avoid it, I would. I wanted to do that because I, I really didn't want to have my body respond in a negative way, which is what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. So and then. On top of that, right after uh, U.S. Indoors, um, I had I was having a lot of ankle pain, um, which had kind of been going on for a while. So I had an MRI, and I, went, I was with Dr. Connors and Dr. Trotter in, in Red Bank, and they said like there's no space in your ankle cavity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, well, try and move your knee over your toe, and I couldn't. So like I'm basically running on a peg leg, yeah. and that explains why I was putting all this stress on my calf in 2017 yeah and then uh last year i was having a lot of hamstring issues and then this this winter it went all the way up to my hip and my butt so it was kind of just like the whole my whole right side right. was just not working i'm like this is like you know i've been running five days a week i'm not exactly crushing it like this is it sounds mechanical and then we hear this and mm -hmm. i'm like it makes perfect sense so uh they uh, Dr. Connors and Trotter, they went into, they said they were going to shave down the bone spur that was causing the impingement, uh, and they ended up taking out these chunks of bone. Yeah, I saw those. They took all of that out of your ankle. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that was yeah. gnarly, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, they were big. Yeah. I was like, oh, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
So, uh, and the recovery was relatively quick. Um, you know, they did a phenomenal job. Like the, the scar is pretty pretty minimal for for what they what they did. Yeah. Uh, and they they took such good care of me. Like I really couldn't have been happier with with how the procedure itself went. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you know still a procedure. You know, it's right. still you're still changing stuff. Uh, so running running came back really slow. Uh, my calf was super weak because I essentially hadn't been using part of it for the last two years. Okay. So like I remember the the first time I did strides. I couldn't I couldn't run for two days because yeah. my calves were like they felt like they were ripping apart, and that was a, that was a new stress. Um, and now I'm also and then I started the antibiotics on the Lyme, and that was making me feel worse for a while. And but then I'm starting to feel better, and it's and so now we're in uh, April basically. Now we're in April, yeah. um, and it's just been like this, you know, one step forward, two steps back for the last year basically. Yeah, um, which is. It's, you know, there's been some really positive lights, um, you know, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm healthy right now. Unfortunately, I went to the doctor on Monday, the Lyme doctor on Monday, and I started a, a, a new dose of antibiotic, and, and that kind of caused me to have a little lull, and that caused the poor, the poor performance on uh, last night. Right. Which, you know, I it, I know it sounds, this is, these are like a really great excuses. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to look at them as explanations not excuses right. um you know there's no real excuse for running 154 you know i i, I had a great practice a couple weeks ago where i ran faster than that like it's mm -hmm. it just it wasn't me like and even just watching it you know my dad was like that like that wasn't you like we were gonna we were supposed to do like some strides or like some two like some workout afterwards and he's like like there's no point like it's it's not you yeah um, yeah and so uh, today, you know, I woke up, like, no headache, like, feeling fine. I'm like, well, I wish the race was today. <laughs> but, you know, I'll get a chance on Sunday to, to, to race, um, you know, Chris and Nick and Drew and, and Sam and, you know, yeah. all, uh, Eric. And, you know, it's, like, really solid guys. So that'll I think that'll be a lot more, more telling of, of where I'm at um, yeah. than a 154 in, in a... <laughs> last night yeah I mean because we've seen you make the last three US world slash Olympic teams outdoors do you feel like you can get back to that level in time to make a fourth in, in July sorry July. Uh, you know I, I'm going to give it a shot you know of course you know you need you need the standard first so I'm going to take one step at a time and, and try and get that standard uh, either June 30th or, or July 9th at the sunset meet mm -hmm. um, and and then go to USA's and you know the guys are running Incredible right now, you know, Johnny and Clayton just crushed the dream mile, you know, Craig just had a PB at, at Portland Yeah, and you know, Matthew hasn't even opened up yet. So he's probably in Awesome shape. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's you know, the, the guys the guys are really hitting it right now So um, if you can if you can be competitive at USA's and, and be fighting for a top three spot You're, you're probably in, in world standard shape. So um I'm hoping that I, I can get even close to a standard and then be competitive at USA's. But they're not letting you guys chase this year, right? Correct. So you have to get it beforehand. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's... You had to chase last time, right? Or yeah, what, 15 and 15, 17. 15, 15 yeah. and 17. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a stupid policy? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it is what it is. You know, I'm, it's not my job to make the rules. It's my job to, to make teams. So if that's what they're telling me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, it's the same for everybody. You know, it's, it's not like... Uh, you know, no one else had to chase the standards the last few times. You know, that was kind of my decision and, and my coach's decision to like put it all into USA's and then chase the time. Mm. Um, so it's just unfortunate that, that this year we have to chase first and then race. But, you know, maybe that'll kind of get the ball rolling a little bit, you know, kind of push us forward. Hey, um, that's a Tim Man Elite phrase. You uh, get what, the, keep the ball rolling. That's oh, their, uh, you're infringing hey, hey, copyright. Though. Hey, man. We're one family, right? Adidas, right? <laughs> all day, every day. Um, <laughs> and I was just going to ask, what's your coaching situation right now? Uh, so I'm, I'm with Coach Vidge uh, and volunteer assistant at Princeton. Uh, so he's still coaching? Yep. And, um, when he's uh, doing Princeton stuff and traveling the world and you know making these smart kids run fast, um, mm -hmm. my dad and my sisters kind of take the reins and uh, make sure that everything goes right. Um, so those two, those two guys, they they know me better than anyone in this world. And uh, you know, even you know, just like like I was saying, like my dad, he's seen me race and he's like, yeah, that, that wasn't you. Um, yeah. And you know, Vich, Vich at a practice last a couple weeks ago, it was the same exact thing. He's like, yeah, that wasn't you. And then two days later, come back and crush the workout. So mm -hmm. it's um. It's a really good setup, and, and they work. They work really well together. We all work really well together. Um, it's uh, yeah. I'm really, I'm really fortunate to have have these guys in my life. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time, Ron. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank good you. Good luck on Sunday. All right. Thank you.